Hey, uh, in today's video, I want to talk about this brand new website that I recently found, which will help you with your endgame training. It's called Chess Endgame Trainer with hyphens between the word dot move three O's dot com. Okay, I'll, I'll put in, put the link in the description so you'll be able to access it. Uh, as of now, there's a free website and I don't think it requires any login. So it's more for a practice side of it. Now, if you are a student and at different levels, there are different things that you can do here on this website. And if you're a coach, this can be very, very valuable in helping your students uh, train an end game. Now, why do we need an end game trainer and why is this website even important? Why are we discussing this? Now, end game is a very, very key aspect of chess. So the good thing about end game is that you know that there are only a certain number of pieces that's going to be there on the board. However, the possibilities of those pieces being spread out is probably infinite. So a trainer is something which gives you these different positions given a set of pieces. And it will test you to see if you are able to play very precisely to get the win. Okay, so let's kind of explore this website a bit. Um, so if you go to the home page, you'll see this presentation, which has about eight categories. And then there's a checkmate in which has about 10 categories. So the eight categories that's there here is nothing but the very first one is basic. And if you click on basic, you'll see that it's queen, rook and double rook. So these are the absolute basics, which even a beginner should know. So if you're a, a novice, a beginner, advanced beginner, the basic section is something that you should be very well versed and or, or if you're not then this is the place where you become well versed right and the next one is pawn and there are many combinations for a pawn so it's a pawn against a king you have two pawns as in a black against a white pawn two pawns against the king two pawns against one pawn two pawns against two pawns three pawns against two pawns three pawns against three four against three and four against four so it kind of covers the entire range of it. And in each one of them, for example, if I take three white pawns against two black pawns, there are 54 positions that you can practice. The ones that's colored white is most likely where you would have to fight for a draw. Everything else is probably for a win. So let's take an example. So if I click on this, then you see that this position is three white pawns against two black pawns. Typically, you would see such games in maybe advanced beginner intermediate level uh, where, you know, your opponent doesn't blunder so much and therefore the pieces usually tend to get exchanged and you have the slight sliver of an advantage which is manifested in a single pawn advantage and you have that one pawn, it's not good enough until you find a way to promote it. So here are the ways you can do it. You can actually choose two different modes. One is a manual mode, which means you decide what's the move for the opponent as well. You don't want this, you want the computer mode. The machine is going to play against you. Um, this one shows you the best move. So in case you're stuck, you can use this, but please don't overuse it. Use it only if you're not able to think through the, the solution. So go through the productive struggle of it. Like let's say you make a couple of wrong moves and you want to start again. Um, then you want to click on this restart and you can start the game again. Now, as you can imagine, the moment you give this pawn away, the, the, the thing is gone. So therefore you want to move the king here. Now comes the problem. What do I do? What is my next move going to be? Should I save this pawn? Should I move somewhere else? Uh, most likely, yes, I need to save this pawn, but that's unfeasible, which means I lose the game. So what else can I do? Can I restart again, move here? Uh, move here and then therefore I can start pushing this one and I think at this point I should be able to win this game and as you can see I can come into a queen and then capture this and move on. So this is the way in which you can try out different puzzles and you can go back and test out any one of them. There's about 157 puzzles just for this particular category of puzzles. So how is this going to help you? As I said, like end game is about training. It's about putting yourself into different positions and keep trying it out. Right. And sometimes it might get really boring or, uh, you know, really tiresome, tedious to go through the process. And this website makes it a little easier. Um, the checkmate is the puzzle which you can do 
checkmate in three, checkmate in four. So this is checkmate in three, for example. Um, you can go back and even do a checkmate in ten, which is actually more like an end game being played precisely. Checkmate in seven. Um, so all of these indicate that you know you can test out your uh, area that you want to improve on, right? And even for for example, queen, you can see that there's this different variation. So this particular one is the queen against two minor pieces. It's a win for white, but it's a precise game. And this is probably where advanced chess is, right? Like because this is the kind of positions that you'll end up when your rating is high, not when you're a beginner. Uh, so you don't have to worry about this. But if you are a beginner, you definitely want to start with basic and pawns to start with, right? As as you go to intermediate, you can start doing more like bishop knight and all these other combinations and even if you're doing a high level one you can do something simpler like rook against bishop it's still a win but you've got to think very very carefully to to actually play the game now what if you're completely stuck and you don't know how the game proceeds in that case you can actually go to the solution which is this one and i think it shows the entire set of moves okay and you can pause at any point and ask yourself, like, why did the rook move there? And you realize that by blocking his own bishop, he could not go to the other side. And now there's no place for the bishop to escape to. Uh, but what if after moving the rook here, the king goes back, then you get to move your king here. It's a pin and the king moves out and therefore you get the bishop. So at least you rationalize the moves based on the solution. So there are different modes in which you can still understand the nuances of the game that proceeds, which means you try it out first. That's one, go through the productive struggle. Second one is you take a one or two hint and see if you can still solve it. The third one is you look at the solution and then you go back and analyze why the solution works in a particular way. Right? So in this case, rook b8, why? Because it creates a constraint, the bishop can't move. If the queen moves anywhere else, the bishop is dead. The queen is forced to move here. And now you move the rook here to prevent the bishop from escaping. And if the rook goes back, all you have to do is move the king, zook zwang him, he's forced to go out into f8 and then rook takes bishop. So at least now you can understand why this particular thing. Now this is, this is a gold mine for coaches where you can actually take a position like this ask these questions to help your, your students think on these lines uh, to say why a particular move is necessary in an end game and you can create your lesson plans around that. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If so, please do click on the like button, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.